Good day, everyone. I am Joey Canyal, New Sigma Phi Sorority, Batch 95, speaking on behalf of the Aging and Longevity Webinars team of the Mu Sigma Phi Sorority. We are streaming a pre-recorded webinar from the video conference room of the UP Manila Information Management Service. The time in Manila is now exactly 12 noon. We have a total of 760 registered participants in this webinar from all over the Philippines and from other countries as well. Hello to our viewers from everywhere. Um, this webinar series runs every second and last Friday from January to November 2019 and will deliver interactive medical lectures by prominent specialists here and abroad on common medical conditions in the geriatric population. Today's webinar was awarded 10 PMA CME units for doctors, one CPD unit for physicians and pharmacists, and two CPD units for nurses. For today's webinar, we are privileged to have a distinguished alumna from the UP College of Medicine, class 1981, as our speaker. She completed her pediatrics residency training at the Philippine General Hospital and went on to finish her fellowship in genetics at the Royal Alexandra Hospital for Children in Sydney, Australia. She is a pioneer in newborn screening and clinical genetics in the Philippines and Asia Pacific region. She is currently a professor of pediatrics at the UP College of Medicine and the chancellor of the University of the Philippines, Manila. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud and honored to welcome Dr. Carmencita David Padilla, Mu Sigma Phi Sorority, Batch 1981. A pleasant good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to all the viewers here in the Philippines as well as the rest of the world. Today's topic is on uh, aging and longevity among healthcare professionals. Being part of the university, it is important that we take care of our health care workers and this session will give us ideas on how we can do this for the other universities as well as um, hospitals. But before we do that, let us first, um, let's define what aging, let's define some, some terms. Aging, longevity, and life expectancy present the burden as well as uh, here in the Philippines, as well as in the global setting and discuss the needs of aging health providers and employees in institutions such as our University Health Sciences Center setting. So let's start with aging. Aging is a lifelong process of growing older at the cellular, organ, or whole body level throughout the lifespan. Longevity is really the duration of life. Life expectancy at birth is the average number of years that a newborn would be expected to live if he or she is subject to the age-specific mortality rate during a given period. What are some figures that we need to understand or some facts on aging and health? Between 2015 and 2050, the proportion of the world's population over 60 years old will nearly double from 12% to 22%, making aging a priority in our setting, whether you're in the Philippines or any part of the world. By 2020, the number of people aged 16, 60 years and older will outnumber the children younger than five years. Whereas in the past, we will say that there are more younger children in the Philippines, now we are saying that there will be more old people in, in our setting. By 2050, 80% of older people will be living in low- and middle-income countries. And that is the reason why this topic is very important in our setting. The pace of population aging is much faster than in the past. All countries face major challenges to ensure that their health and social systems are ready to make the most of this demographic shift. The, um, if you take a look at this graph, in 2016, an estimated 5 million, and that's less than 5% of the population, were aged 65 or older. By 2030, there is a projected increase by 4.2%. That's about 90 million for aged 60 and above. 
So why talk about aging now? We'd like to age not only gracefully, but we'd like to age in a very healthy manner. So what is healthy aging? Healthy aging is the process of developing and maintaining the functional ability that enables well-being in older age. We all want to achieve healthy aging. The functional ability is determined by the person's intrinsic capacity, the combination of all individuals' physician and mental capacities, relevant environmental factors in the interaction between the two. It is not enough that we understand our body. It is understand that we have the environment to make us healthy. Life expectancy is the average number of years that a newborn would be expected to live if he or she is subject to the age-specific mortality rate during a given period. But what are the contributors for life expectancy? For low-middle-income countries like the Philippines, it is a reduction in maternal and child mortality. In high-income countries, it is a declining fertility rate and the declining mortality of older age groups. Now, looking at this graph, um, if you look at um, graph here, if you look at in the 1950s, in the 1950s, you can see that there were more children actually eight, less than age five, and yeah, the lower percentage of the old ones. But somewhere in the mid, somewhere beyond 2010, there's an intersection showing that because of better uh, health facilities, because of better health care. Because of technology being able to identify these patients who might get sick, we are getting more and more children, more and more children becoming healthier adults. And you can see that because of technology, we have children who are now, uh, the number of children dying also is actually going down. So definitely the life expectancy is actually increasing with time. Now, the remarkable improvements in life expectancy over the past century is really part of the shift in the leading causes of death and disease. Now, for instance, um, we all know that you know, we used to have infectious diseases and parasitic diseases in infants and children, but now there's a shift actually to more of the non-communicable diseases and, uh, in adults and older children. And um, in the more developed countries, it is very obvious that the, uh, the resolution of the infectious diseases actually is much earlier than that in the low middle income and low income countries. So this is actually an interesting graph because it actually compares the high income countries, the middle income and the low income countries. And you can see that from 2008 to the year 2030, if blue refers to the non-communicable diseases, there's only a very slight shift actually. And uh, the, the partly shaded one is the communicable and the, 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 the white one will be the injuries. But look at the middle income countries. Slowly we're catching up. You can see that we, ha we are having a, an increasing burden of the non-communicable diseases, both in the, low, in the middle income countries as well as the low income countries. And for this reason, it is very important for us to understand now how can we cope with, um, with having a better life, a healthier life, having healthier aging, because we know that uh, these children who used to die because of infectious diseases will now grow up to be adults uh, in the community. Now, with regard to life expectancy, um, this, this graph will show you that the blue one is actually the Philippines, and it will show you that... Um, Actually, way back in the 1950s, our life expectancy compared to the Southeast Asian, Southeastern Asian and Asia was actually higher. But through the decades, we can see that um, the Asia as a whole and the Southeastern Asian actually has a higher life expectancy as compared to the Philippines. And that actually has a lot of bearing on the kind of health care that we are providing our, our population. This is um, this time. This is the 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 total population by broad age group, and you can see here that the fifteen to sixty four. This is the number, and uh, zero to fourteen will be your blue, and then your less than sixty five will be uh, with the, for the green one, and the life expectancy for a Filipino born in nineteen ninety, somewhere here, is actually sixty five, about 
67 years old. By 2015, which is summer here, the life expectancy will be about roughly about 72. So life expectancy is really increasing and once again brings us to our topic today of making sure that we grow old in a very healthy environment. So now, what is a healthy life expectancy? Well, 30% of how we age, biology and genetics will be responsible for 30% of how we age and our disposition for disease. But you can see that a greater percentage is actually due to the environment and our lifestyle. This only refers to improvement in nutrition, sanitation, disease management and uh, medicines such as antibiotics, intake for vaccines, drugs for hypertension, diabetes, control of diabetes, and of course, you know, being able to pick up a, a certain illness early enough so that we can, we can actually treat the, the condition much earlier. Safety in roads, workplace, and as well as lifestyle. Now, since we are talking about now um, uh, aging and longevity among health professionals, so let's take a look at our community at the University of the Philippines, Manila, uh, which has a population of about um, 5,000 students, 1,000 faculty, mem uh, uh, faculty members, and of course another uh, 5,000 employees. Uh, we are in a very congested area in the middle of Manila and it's very important for us now to take a look on how we are going to ensure that our population will have um, uh, the opportunity to have a healthy aging while working or studying in UP Manila. We don't have to, um, we really don't have to look far because a strategy has been uh, developed. We have the Global Strategy and Action Plan on Aging and Health spelled out for 2016 to 2020. And this is actually our guide in making sure that we have the right strategy for healthy, for healthy aging in our community. So what are the guiding principles? Aging is valuable and it's often challenging process. In other words, um, it's not easy to age in a healthy way and we have to address the challenges that come along our way. It is good. We should feel good that it's uh, feel good. We should feel good that it's okay to get old, and that society is better off for having older populations. For a while, we were saying that the older population would be a burden. We'd like to reverse that. Another principle is that it acknowledges that many older people will experience very significant losses, whether physical or cognitive, or a family, friends, and the roles that they had earlier in life. And that the other principle is that societal responses to aging should not deny these challenges, but seek to foster recovery, adaptation, and dignity. And this will require a transformative approach that recognizes the rights of older people and enable them to thrive in the complex, changing, and unpredictable environment. Environment must respect their dignity and human rights, free from gender and age-based discrimination. The objectives, the strategic objectives of this uh, global strategy are, are very important as we carry out, um, carry out the principles here in UP Manila. So the vision is a world in which everyone can live a long and healthy life. The strategic objectives will be a commitment to action on healthy aging in every country, developing age-friendly environments, aligning health systems to the needs of older populations, developing sustainable and equitable systems for providing long-term care, whether at home, in the community, or in the institutions. And the fifth is improving measurement, monitoring, and research on healthy aging. UP Manila is committed to the action on healthy aging. UP Manila will develop age-friendly environments. And UP Manila will provide the measurement, monitoring, and research on healthy aging. So how do we do this? Well, as a start, UP Manila will provide the leadership and the coordination in providing the services for the aging community. 
most of our employees have stayed with us for decades. And I myself have seen this, that those who were young decades ago are still part of our community. We are committed that we will make sure that they will age in a healthy way within our community. With a focus on the aging community, UP Manila will develop modules that will provide information on healthy living and healthy lifestyle among the health providers and the employees. Actually, right now, I am leading a, uh, a group that's, that has put together 13 modules on, on uh, a healthy, uh, 13 modules on work, workplace, uh, 30 modules on wellness in the workplace. And as a matter of fact, just last March 1, we launched this together with the Open University because we realized that a face-to-face -face encounter will not be enough to make sure that our community will be served. So what, what is the meaning of this module? We'd like a, an ordinary employee to learn what are the things to stay healthy and when are they going to do this. With the traffic in UP Manila, we'd like our employees, our students and faculty to actually use their mobile phones to learn anything about healthy living by the use of their mobile phone. By the end of the year, we expect that uh, the 13 modules will be available, accessible on your tablet, on your laptop, as well as the mobile phone. So we'd like to give this opportunity to teach them on how to become healthier in the workplace. Of course, the, the, the challenge for us is actually the environment and UP Manila is committed to provide a favorable work environment so that we can promote a healthy lifestyle within the providers and the employers. Um, we'd like to evaluate the work assignments. Uh, some of the assignments are no longer appropriate for our for our employees. I have met some empl some employees who have moved to other tasks because they feel they can no longer handle a task that they were able to handle decades ago. So work assignment is going to be reviewed here in UP Manila. We'd like to promote this by making sure that food, good food is available. Honestly, this is a challenge in, in UP Manila right now. But in about three years, and I cannot commit, maybe two years, we will be able to offer better food to our people when the cafeteria is open. We, don't, we really need a cafeteria in UP Manila that's going to serve better food to our people. We're working on the roads, despite the fact that you know we have this, uh, uh, so that people will start walking inside UP Manila. We're making sure that uh, we're accident free. And the other thing that we're doing right now is that we're actually working on a greener community. So um, if we do have alumni in among our viewers, I want this, I'd like to show you the skyline in the next two to three years. We have four buildings that are coming up by next year. But as you can see, we have identified some spaces that are actually green at the moment and um, to make sure that it becomes a walkable campus. Uh, by walkable campus, it means that we will provide parking places now for our, for our faculty and staff so that they can now walk to the buildings in the protection of covered walks so that they will enjoy walking within the campus instead of taking their vehicles to the next building. So I'd like to, in, I'm inviting everybody to come visit in, maybe even by, by next year, in, but in two to three years time, I think the whole place would have been developed to be a walkable campus, promoting a better environment for our employees. Exercise. So aside from walking, uh, right now actually we do have classes. We have Zumba classes. Uh, at different levels and as you can see here that the, we're trying to encourage more to participate but one thing that I've requested one of our faculty members now is to actually introduce yoga into our uh, community. We have no less than Dr. Melfred Hernandez, a registered um, yoga instructor who will soon be offering yoga classes uh, to the community and uh, I encourage everybody to watch out for this announcement uh, as we make this a reality for our setting. Right now, our employees are entitled to be seen actually by the community, but what we'd like to introduce 
is the availment of, uh, especially among the older generation, of these annual checkups, uh, with a focus on the needs of the aging, aging employee. Uh, right now, a physical an annual physical examination is actually free, but we know that some are not availing of this opportunity right now. So we're going to have a focus now on the older age group and make sure that we have a checklist that will make them to be make them more comfortable and uh, hopefully you know enjoy their stay in the community. UP Manila um, is actually very lucky because within our needs is a, the Institute of Aging, which is part of the National Institutes of Health. This is actually led by Dr. Shelley de la Vega, and the thrust is actually to provide evidence that will be the basis of policies, not only in UP Manila, for, but for the rest of the Philippines. I've requested them to actually conduct a survey on the health status of UP Manila employees as one of their priority projects so that we can better address the needs of our population. I've also requested them to be uh, the main agency that will monitor the adequacy of our UP Manila policies that's directed to the aging community. And uh, of course, you know, it's not just, uh, I want them to come up with very concrete projects catered to the aging community. UP Manila is very fortunate to have all kinds of uh, uh, specialists. We have the specialists for the young and we have the specialists for the older population. So we'd like to make sure that everything is covered with proper policies that's being delivered now by this, uh, by this Institute of Aging. So what I've done today actually is I've um, differentiated that, giving a definition of aging, longevity, and life expectancy. I've, we've discussed the burden in uh, the country, whether it's global or the Philippine setting. Uh, the needs of our aging, uh, the, the providers, whether they're aging or not, but most especially for the aging population. And of course, we'd like to talk about the plans for the aging community of UP Manila. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Shella de la Vega, who, is, um, who has assisted actually in providing the materials for this, for this lecture. And I want to thank the efforts of her, her team for making this a reality for our community. So UP Manila, thank you for listening, but let me tell you that uh, UP Manila is willing to take on the challenge to address the aging population, and this is going to happen because we have a community that cares for the aging population. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Padilla, for that comprehensive talk. Um, we have viewers over UP Manila live stream, YouTube live, Facebook live, and seven other groups viewing from all over the Philippines. Um, since today's webinar is pre-recorded, uh, we will be asking questions from the webinar team. Now, if anyone from the live audience has any questions, you may type in your questions at the Q&A chat box in the right lower corner um, of our live stream window or type in the comments in your YouTube live or you can send personal messages to the FB at Aging webinars. Then we will try our best to um, address these questions and we will have Chancellor Padilla answer them so that we can share the answers with you in a future webinar. Um, but since we do have the time and we will have questions, first question, ma'am, I just, I was really curious. The, the, the modules you were talking yes. about, they will be free for everyone? Uh, so far, that's uh, that's a plan. So actually, we when we did when we did this uh, set of modules, um, we started with a face to face. The face to face means uh, we started with factory employees. We wanted to see the need for this kind of modules: wellness from hypertension to obesity, to uh, vaccination, uh, healthy pregnancy, mm -hmm. and um, the feedback was really very good. And as a matter of fact, the the factory workers wanted more. We actually also introduced the modules to the employees of NIH and they were asking me why only now because the information really is for the general public. Now, I'm not able to do this face-to-face -face for a lot of the employees and even just for our community. So we decided to uh, partner with Open University. So right now, they are actually developing uh, the app for this one 
And uh, my idea is that um, there are these are bite-sized 20-minute uh, lessons. And if you complete all our modules, you will get a certificate of wellness. Yay, okay, so nice. it's a as Very I said, we nice. just launched this yes. and. Uh, why 20 minutes? Because after 20 minutes, the light, you know, attention span is short, span. Yes. and uh, they probably will fall asleep if they're in the, if they're in the vehicle. But this is really for the general public. So eventually, this is going to be open to the public. That's wonderful. Okay. That's so amazing. it's our contribution. Now, I'm already being asked to develop more modules, not just for wellness. So this is really the title is uh, work, Workplace Wellness modules that's really the title we're going to put now a module on on healthy aging as said to de develop this so right now the modules are being reviewed by experts just for content again before we uh, submit it now to the open university to develop into an app it's going to be a very simple app but i so far the feedback has been very good to let it just pass as a face-to-face -face encounter because ma'am, we have to admit that um, many of the elderly don't know where to get information. Oh, so if yes. they feel something, they'll just ascribe it to aging and not uh, see a doctor or not consult. Maybe the modules will yes, address we will. that. Yes, uh, as a contribution to the series, then I will commit that we will have. Uh, We'll have the module before the end of the year for healthy aging wow, that's because the modules right now are more uh, general uh, conditions, but I will commit to develop the, the module for healthy aging. That's wonderful. Yeah. Ma'am, I remember uh, in your lecture earlier, you were saying something that, uh, and we all know that it's true that people are living longer. Yes. So it used to be that uh, people died of disease. Yes. Nowadays, people live with disease. Yes. So it's because precisely because of the non-communicable yes. diseases. Yes. And I think it's better technology, you know. Um, in the past, they would say that uh, if you have a heart disease, you will die. You will die. Now yeah. we know that you can live. Yes. If you're picked up early and given the right medication, you will survive. Yes. There's surgery right now that has changed that a lot of that things. So, um, but we'd like to age gracefully and Better in a very healthy matter and I think this is a, this is an excellent way of uh, uh, reaching out to the public on what we can do yeah. um, that that brings me to a really hot topic nowadays the universal health care yeah. since this is new to the Philippines yes. none of us really know how it's going to affect um, health care in general but because we have more uh, elderly uh, definitely it will have an impact uh, I mean, the UHC will have an impact on the health care of the elderly. Well, I'd Your like, opinions? Well, I'd like to believe that if the UHC law is implemented um, the Properly. way it should be, yes, then we will have more older, we'll have, an, we'll have a bigger older population yes. eventually. Yes. Um, maybe my, my message to the audience is we have to speak up for the groups that we that we handle because as the implementing rules and regulation is being written up we need all the voices so that means yes. those taking yes. care of the old must speak up and make sure that our needs are put in mm -hmm. those taking care of the very young must also put in place what they think yeah, should they be put in so i think you know if um, the greater if my audience would be the greater population would be in the health professions we have to do our share now as the implementing rules and regulation is actually being developed. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we were all asking questions is how is this going to impact the, the way we do healthcare now? And nobody has an answer. Well, because it's, um, it's still being written up, but mm -hmm. this is the time to speak up. So I think we have to work by groups. Mm -hmm. And for those who are, uh, um, for the group, of the, the, the group of diseases that we were engaged in, we have to be the voice. Yes. yes, that would be wonderful if we can speak up for this population. Yeah. I go to a lighter topic. As it, the food. <laughs> the food. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So let me tell you my plan because I think it's going to happen. Okay. Um, well, for first, I I'd like people to use really. I'd like people to love water instead of uh, soda. Yeah. But I have okay. discussed this with uh, the director of PGH. I need to give an alternative to water before I ban bottled water and the other bottled 
juices. On all of that. So uh, what I'm as far as water first is concerned, all the new buildings will have water. Free water. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, water, water fountains. It, yes, and clean water. So I'm still deciding on what to do with the old buildings, but with the new buildings, my requirement is that there should be provision for clean water in every floor of that building. So I don't have to buy bottled water? Bottle. Because I want to remove the bottle, the water at one point, but I can't remove it at this time. So I just bring my own water yes. bottle. Yes, this is our contribution <sighs> yes. to environment. Yes. And That's But wonderful. you have to give me time to implement that because I, as I told the director, so for instance, at the emergency room, I'm expecting that there will be provision for free water because uh, they're now re renovating the areas. Let's go to food, okay. Um, healthy food. Healthy food. Uh, I really have a plan for a cafeteria that I think it's going to happen. I had good news this morning, so I think it's going to happen, but this cafe, we have several cafeterias that's going to be open. We have one at NAH. We have, I have another big plan actually, and we have to make sure that we bring on board all the providers that they will only provide healthy, healthy food. food. Yes, and we will not and not fast food. Okay, because so, ma'am, that's the easiest because of where yes. we are. Yes, but we will try to change that. Yes. Um, uh, when this happens, I think it will happen in about two or three years. But the NIH is going to be open next year, so we will have an alternative. Uh, the water is something I can do much quicker because when the buildings are up, the water will be there. Mm -hmm. The NIH will have a couple of stalls, but my requirement is that it's going to be healthy food. So um, it's very challenging uh, because uh, of competition outside, but at least within UP Manila, I'd like to make sure that we offer healthy food. Because ma'am, how, how, how often has it happened that we look at what's available and you can feel it. I'm going to get diabetes. I'm going to get hypertension. Yes. I'm going to get all this from eating the food that's okay. easily available. L let me see what I can do. Uh, something in transition with regards to food. I, I'll talk to the vice chancellor for administration if we can do something wherein all the ones who will provide, the providers will can only concentrate on health food. That's wonderful. I'm looking forward to that. I am also even beyond my retirement. <laughs> uh, we have a question. Um, do we have any existing programs in our campus that address the health needs of our elderly employees? Um, existing. What we have really right now is, um, uh, you know, when you have a birthday, we have an annual physical examination that is available. Okay. Um, I realize that everybody takes advantage of that. So that's something that we can put into place. Yeah. But as I said in my lecture, I'd like the the geriatric uh, section of uh, internal medicine as well as the Institute of Aging to propose a probably a, even a checklist as a start okay. that can be used by our um, uh, um, call this for our the health service. The health service. And this can be used so that there's a different checklist for our for our aging population. I think because the needs are what, different depending that's right, on the age. That's right. So I'm going to request uh, Dr. De La Vega, and I know that she's she's going to be listening, uh, that uh, that they will come up with a checklist for our health providers. And this is going to be used uh, uh, in all of the health center. I mean all the infirmaries within the university within the system. Yes. yes. I think right now it's just a generic uh, blood test, an x-ray, and an ECG. We will change that. Yes. As our contribution to uh, uh, to the series, that's another commitment that I will, I will give. Okay. Ma'am, um, if we implement all of this, we're foreseeing a healthier workforce. Yes. Does that mean that the retirement age will be moved uh, back? Well, uh, even right now, there's already talk about moving retirement to 70. I don't think it's going to happen in the next couple of years, but we all know that uh, we're very functional beyond the age 65. Yes. Yes. Um, I'd like to believe that you know people will know when they need to retire, retire. Yes, because there's really life after retirement. 
but I'd like them to retire in a very healthy condition so that they can enjoy life outside of work. Right. And I think that's our goal right now. I'd really like to see more, more to be walking rather mm-hmm. than riding. Uh, because once we remove all the parking spots in the roads, they have no choice but to walk and walk to their building. So yeah. actually, uh, this morning, that was my meeting, I'm, I'm asking an urban planner to design the, cor- the covered walks. Because oh. if you're going to come from uh, the parking building and during the rainy period, all right. then of That's course right. you're going to get rain. wet. So I have, I have solved the new buildings. I have not solved the old buildings, old buildings because there will be connecting bridges between the buildings. Okay. But I want it to be beautiful when I look up. It doesn't doesn't look messy. So that was actually my discussion this morning. I'm asking an urban planner to to give me a design such that I have connections between the old and the new buildings and still have a beautiful uh, skyline. Because I want that skyline to come up, the one I showed to you. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. skyline is going to be up actually by next year. Yes. Okay. So, do we have any other... Okay, so <coughs> now we would like to thank uh, the UP College of Medicine, the UP Medical Foundation, and the Music Sigma Foundation for their contributions to this webinar. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we would also like to acknowledge the Postgraduate Institute of Medicine, the UP Manila Information Management Service, and the DOST, ASDI, and the PRC Board of Nursing. Most of all, we would like to thank you, our participants, for spending your lunch hour with us. Now, okay. to receive your certificates of attendance, please do um, log on to this website so that you can fill up the evaluation form uh, but you must do it within two days of this webinar the certificate will be emailed to your registered email addresses within two to four weeks um, today's webinar recording and all webinar recordings may be viewed at the YouTube at YouTube with capital U capital P at Aging Webinars channel. Next up on March 29, please do join us as we have another webinar on hypertension in the elderly by Dr. Esperanza Cabral on March 29. Um, before we give you the schedule of the rest of the webinars, we would like to thank again our Chancellor, Dr. Carmencita David Padilla, for spending time with us um, on this webinar and helping elucidate all of these issues. Some of them are so new to us. Some of them should have been discussed a long time ago, but are only coming into our consciousness now. Thank you very much for taking the time. Um, then the new, the upcoming webinars are as follows. And then for more details and updates, please check our Facebook page at facebook.com uh, slash agingwebinars and our Twitter timeline at twitter.com slash agingwebinars. Or email us at mewwebinars at gmail.com. Now, one last thing. We are proud to announce the launch of our ob Gain Pearls book. Um, this is now available and uh, you can order with the attached uh, via the attached cell phone number. Um, this is a quick guide to all the um, most common ob gyn conditions that uh, we face today. So we're very proud of this. It, uh, now it's finally available. I think it was released only a few days ago. Um, then... You are invited also to join the other webinars that are provided by the UP Medicine. 
Um, these are on Wednesday, Wednesdays. Um, and we go through a, a whole lot of different topics also. Um, additionally, for the Lenten season, there is a Lenten webinar series um, on March. Uh, these include webinars on March 22 and April 5. So, thank you again for joining us. Thank you again, Dr. Padilla. Thank you to the new webinars team. See you again on March 29 and have a great weekend, everybody. New webinar signing off. <laughs>